role of the Royal Agricultural Society is basically split into three different areas. First of all, it's practice with science, knowledge transfer from the research and development communities and technology transfer areas to the farmer and the farm gate. And next of all, it's support to the rural community and all those that work in that community as well. And finally, it's about farming and countryside education to our younger generation that's very naive about food production and indeed agriculture. The strengths of the society are its credibility, which is founded upon the fact that it's apolitical, it's a charity and it's non-profit making. I see Stoneleigh Park as the crown jewels. It's a 250 acre showground with some significant anchor tenants, which include the National Farmers Union and the Agricultural and Horticultural Development Boards, as well as quite a few other relevant partner agencies as well. Outside the showground, we've also got farmland, which we can use for car parking and in farming activities. In partnership once again with Advantage West Midlands, we hope to have a new road built in to the north from the A46, which allows a sort of a, a dual carriageway access to the site. And with that access becomes planning permission, and with some investment, we hope to develop the site into a research, development, technology, and rural centre of excellence for the whole of the country. So we will continue with our events, conferences, seminars and demonstrations to still aim to transfer that knowledge that's happening all the time to the farming community. The vision for the society is to work and positively shape those that work in agriculture and indeed the rural community as well. I'm responsible for generating income from the site through commercial letting of the fantastic facility that we have here at Stoneley Park and also the team that deliver our core purpose events. We're sitting within 250 acres of business park. We're surrounded by a further about 1,100 acres of parkland and farmland. We offer a range of technical events and other communication tools to try and get messages across about how science and technology can be applied in agriculture, the food sector, and those sort of associated industries, forestry, and some of the livestock areas, including horses. We see that sort of knowledge transfer as something critical that society needs to work to do. It's all about support for the sector through charitable work and indeed all about farm and countryside education for youngsters. We need to demonstrate to the wider world that the agri-food sector is an exciting place to work with some really rewarding career opportunities. We have two main purposes. One is that in terms of the society, we're that part of the charitable activity that focuses on rural community and social issues, ethical issues in the countryside. And for the churches, we're the National Rural Resources Unit. Effectively, that means that anything to do with the work of the church in the countryside is our responsibility. The Arthurang Centre has been going now for over 30 years. It's wholly owned by the society, but exists as a charity in its own right as well. The Arthurang Centre is there to fulfil what is right at the heart of the charitable objectives of the RESE, but it's also helping the churches engage more with rural issues and with the wider community. Hence, I think in what we do in terms of serving the villages, the hamlets, the, the farms, out there in the countryside, we're right at the heart of what the RESE stands for. Farming and Countryside Education, which is commonly known as FACE, has three key objectives. The first one is to act as an advocate for education for the food, farming and countryside sector. The, the second of its objectives is to actually support schools, to support their curriculum both inside the classroom and outside of the classroom on visits such to farms. And the third is to actually gather evidence so that we've actually got the research base to make our case. We are working with the society but we're also working with many other partners and so by setting ourselves as a charity under the umbrella of the uh, RASE it allows us greater flexibility in terms of fundraising. We see new media and other ways of engaging with young people as being a very important way. We're in the library of the Royal Agricultural Society of England. It's a library that's existed since the inception of the society in 1838 and these books are, in a sense, the milestones of the development of farming, of agriculture, and the development of the society. When you look at these books, you see both the history of agriculture and the progress of the society at the same time. 
because it was at the forefront of agricultural development. The role of the Royal Agricultural Society takes its roots from the 19th century and in simple terms it's practice with science and in today's parlance we would call that knowledge transfer from the science and research development community to the farmer right to the farm gate.